We steer the waves in the air and we never give them back. We are. 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 Lo fi poli sci. Yes, we are. Lo fi poli sci podcast coming at you, talking about that famous question what's going on in the world today? And into the fray we go to Chile where the president of the country has been impeached. And this is a country that is currently, like at this very moment, writing a brand new constitution. And then the Pandora Papers were released with incriminating reports of financial corruption by leaders all around the world. And now, the president of Chile, well, he's caught up in this scandal too. And on trial, he will go to the Senate to decide his fate. Should he stay or should he go now? Keep tuned in to find out what happens next in Chilean politics. Things are always popping off there. But now to Belarus and Poland and the EU and the US and Russia and Central Asia and the Middle East and North Africa, all in one. But how, you may be asking, are all these in the same damn story? Well, let's hit it. Immigrants from North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia have traveled through parts of the border areas near Russia and funneled their ways through the corridors to Belarus and have been funneled further to the Belarus and Polish border, where Poland has erected razor wire fences and deployed the military to stop said migrants from crossing and at the same time accusing Russian President Vlad the Impaler Putin of using Belarus as a pawn to punish the West, as well as Belarus using the migrants as pawn to punish the EU over sanctions from that sham of an election from last year. And where does the U.S. come into all this, you may be asking? Well, one of the individuals who were arrested for the January 6th overthrow of the Capitol is now seeking political asylum in Belarus, so sayeth the Belarus state media. And that damn statement says a lot, because political asylum in Belarus? This individual must not know anything about Belarus. And breathe. And now you know how Belarus, Poland, EU, Russia, Middle East, Central Asia, North Africa can all be connected in one story. And if that's not connecting the dots, I don't know what is. Now to Wednesday's edition of the game. Are we landlocked or not? We'll name a country and you have to decide if it is completely surrounded by other countries and has no access to the sea, meaning landlocked or not. And keep track of your score to collect all that lo-fi loot redeemable at the end of Season 4 for a special prize. And last week, we left off in Central Asia, where we pick up today. Number one, Mongolia. Are we landlocked or not? And five, four, three, two, one. Landlocked it is. Oh yes, Mongolia is completely surrounded by land. Two countries out there, Russia and China. Number two, Nepal. Are we landlocked or not? And five, four, three, two, one. Survey says, Nepal is in fact landlocked as well. Number three, Bhutan. Is it landlocked or not? Five, four, three, two, one. Bhutan is landlocked. Oh, yeah. And number four, Laos. Is it landlocked or not? And five, four, three, two, one. And Laos is Landlocked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our final one, number five, Lesotho. Is it landlocked or not? And I bet you're thinking, whoa, 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 wait, I thought we were in Asia. What are we doing in Africa now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And five, four, three, two, one. And Lesotho is landlocked. And did you go five for five today? And guess that all of our countries were landlocked. Write in and let us know how much of that lo-fi loot did you really get today. But now, back to the grind that is that lo-fi global news. To Myanmar we go to an update on the situation there. So word is, the fighting tragically continues between the military and rebel forces. But also, corruption trials continue for the politicians that were arrested the day of the coup. And two former state ministers were sentenced after being convicted of multiple charges of corruption. A former planning minister of the state was sentenced to 90 years plus labor for corruption. And a former chief minister was sentenced to 75 years. 90 years and 75 years for corruption, people. I mean, wow, really, really just wow. This is so intense. And these are just the first two of many politicians that were arrested and going on trial. And Aung San Suu Kyi, she's on trial too. 
So we're still waiting to see how that's going to turn out. And we'll keep you posted, Lo-Fi listeners, but things, they're not looking too good in Myanmar. And now to go to a place where things are also not looking too good, Nicaragua and the presidential election that took place on Sunday. So the results, and no surprises here, because the government arrested virtually everyone who said they were going to run for president, but incumbent President Daniel Ortega has won the election with about 75% of the vote. For his fourth term in office, first having come to office in 2007, and the term now for five more years. People, Ortega has been in power for 14 years and just won another five. And I mean, what can we say? You know, the U.S. is threatening and likely will put more sanctions on the country. Other countries have cried foul. Opposition in the country has cried foul. No one other than Ortega himself thinks this election was legit. Then why is everyone going to simply turn their head the other way and keep living their best life? Question mark. Oh, right. Sovereignty. That's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The idea that we don't mess with your domestic affairs, so please don't mess with our domestic affairs. Oh, but aren't sanctions directly messing with another country's domestic affairs? And it also disproportionately negatively affects women and children and others that are already in poverty way more than it actually affects the corrupt leaders of government. And that piece of knowledge? That ain't nothing new, Lo-Fi Nation. We've been knowing that. And yet, we still use sanctions. Full well knowing Ortega isn't leaving power. And those sanctions, they're not going to hurt him one bit. So what do you do then, you know? When you're in the world and you see people abusing power. And you see people stealing human rights from other human beings. What do you do, Lo-Fi Nation? Write in. I'm curious your thoughts. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. Let's take a step back and breathe. With a bit of gaming news and a bit of Guinness World Record news on our brand new nine-foot-tall Atari joystick, which is now the official largest gaming joystick in the world. Oh, yeah. It takes two people to use this joystick to play any number of the old-school Atari games like Asteroid or Centipede. And this, I truly love. I mean, there was no practical reason to build this other than someone saying, Hey, you know what? I bet I could build a 9-foot Atari joystick that actually works. And someone else saying, Bullshit, shenanigans, you cannot do it. So, some amazing individual actually did it. And check it out, people. I love things like this. Mm-hmm. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Interested in writing into the show? Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, myself on LinkedIn. Email us, let your voice be heard. Always remember that Lo-Fi poli is more than just me. It's the week that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off.